Hello, back again to show you how efficient engineering is when a plan becomes a plan. So I'm back in my project. First thing I want to do here in this project, let's take a look at uh, some comments that may have come in overnight on the ePulse, remember eView. Inside eView, uh, we have the option to share this project with other colleagues and they may actually come up with some red linings. So I'll just check out here if this particular project here had some red linings and I can see, whoa, yep. Yeah, there uh, was one actually already done here in ready for review is this one here. Obviously it seems to be more like a test, which it is. So I will just take this and say, okay, let's just remove it. Okay, this was a test, obviously. But better than this, let's take a look at the more important one that we just saw here, the function text missing. Okay, so it opens the right page. It tells me what it is. I'm gonna prove it, I'll do that later. I'll, we'll check out and do it in a while. So basically everyone knows I have noticed this change. I'm gonna come back to it. So I'm gonna put that aside. This is cool. And now I will work on my panel. So the idea is, of course, how do I, when you go here inside your panel and you decide to fill out the panel with all the components that should be mounted, how do you ensure that all your devices have been mounted? Well, here I have an unplaced parts with mounting location as a filter. And I can see here, this filter was simply created based on the number of units of unplaced components, it has to be greater or equal than one. External placement, of course, not activated. And mounting, pan, mounting location equals A1. So I can see all the devices that are assigned with a part number that show up here. But even more important, how do I know that all the devices inside my project and inside this project do have a part number. So when I open here the bill of material, I can activate a special setting that says, show me all the devices without a part number and even device for terminals. And this pretty much calls up here all the devices that have no part number. So this means if I'm going back here to the go to graphics, I can see I have here two circuit breakers that really have no part numbers yet. Of course, if you want to place these part numbers inside your panel, well, you might as well assign a part number. So here, let's go and check it out. What we have, we have Alan Bradley that could fit. We have some Schneider that could fit. We have some Siemens that could fit. So of course, uh, let's go with the description to be more precise. So these are a very small one, 10 amps. That's a huge one. So maybe a small circuit breaker like this that could do it. And I'll just use this part number so it's filled. I can continue like this on and on. These drives, two possible drives, uh, where are they? Go to graphics and oh, they're actually in the 3D. So I'm not gonna worry too much about these parts. Uh, these are just these covers here, okay? So obviously that's fine, they don't have any part number. Limit switches are out in the field, motors, push buttons. Here I have three push buttons. If I want these three push buttons to also have a part number be placed on my panel, I'll do the same thing. So let's see, we have Alan Bradley parts, we have again, green flush push button, that's one, black flush push button, that's another one, a blue complete button like this. Well, maybe let's use this one, let's see. These are all, so I'm pretty much proximity switch, solenoids, motors, limit switches, I'm, I'm good to go. That means that all my devices inside my panel are actually defined. Now I wanna place them. So I go here inside my uh, 3D enclosure. I say, let's take here the only mounting panel. Let's take a front view. Let's see where I still have some room to place some of these devices. So this one here, we may actually place it more precisely, just take it and drag it out. Uh, so these actually will all go out on the top. 
the TV, there's nothing there. It's just a switch. That's a transformer. It's quite a big device here. If I take this guy and I try to place it, uh, yeah, I'll actually put it there. It's nice. Uh, we have a couple of circuit breakers. These two circuit breakers, I could probably just place them here. So as you can see, I'm not turning on the collision check and a little bit on purpose. Uh, what is this guy? This is a very tiny guy, so this one I could probably fit right in between here. Could fit it there. I could fit it, fit it there. I can choose, right? Let's put it there. Um, so these cables here are not on a mounting line. Okay, these here, the cables, I don't care. E stop, uh, K overload, overload. There's an, an interesting one. There's one I missed out. So technically, if I take this one, uh, it should be hooked up here to this one in particular. I'm just going to place it there, boom, and overload OLR. There we go. And it just fits perfectly in place. So a couple of push buttons and other items that actually shall go on the door. So let's finish this up here and open the door. Door is actually directly to be accessible like this. Now, I do have a couple of items already. When I do place the door, I like to turn on the um, collision check because very often the collision check will prevent uh, my push buttons or items that I place to collide with anything that's in the back. So let's say here this bigger push button, if I try to place it here, we'll see if it actually fits. If it fits, I can actually place it. If it doesn't fit and, and it actually warns me, I should then just be careful because it wouldn't it, it would probably collide with the object in the back. If it doesn't, then we're happy, we're good, we can place it. So here I have a couple of contacts. These contacts, um, these are push buttons. So these are contacts that have to go on the PB4, which is probably the back side of this door. So here to open the back side, I'll come back to it. Um, I'll place these three push buttons here and uh, we'll just drag and drop it. And here, when I place it, I'm gonna use an interesting option called placement option that allows me to put a certain distance in between each of these push buttons. I'll place three of them. So let's say we start maybe right uh, here in this area, maybe in between these other push buttons. Looks a little bit better, like that. Then we have a potentiometer here. This one is slightly bigger. Let's see if it actually fits here. If it does, perfect. We'll just place it there, that's cool. Then what else do we have? We have the selector switch here. Um, that's also some sort of a selector switch. It starts with a selector switch in the front end. So maybe you wanna put the selector switch uh, right there it's possible if it's too close to the other object uh, we can always move these around I'm just gonna put it there and I'm gonna adjust okay so now what I need to do is open the back side or the door so here when you pretty much look up for a device you can do it like that that's very easy you just say synchronize selection it shows you the door and of course you have the door inside and if you want you can turn on the door inside there you go you can see it just stop by double clicking on it and i'll be placing some of these other objects like this one here has to be placed like this on the latch like that okay so uh to place this one is a little bit tricky because it doesn't like the because it has to be placed on the latch itself uh, what else do we have? We have selector switch. So remember the selector switch, we actually placed it there. So I'm going to put the selector switch also like that here, right there. So that's the contact, right? So it's gone. And everything is pretty much placed. Now, do I have to move a couple of things around? I may have to add here a few more routing paths because if I want to uh, route to the bottom of, yeah, let's see, I'll, I'll probably move it up here, move it here, and move it there, perfect. And you'll see what that does. It's basically, it will allow me, when I do the routing, 
it will allow me to run the um, wires up and above these push buttons or other items. You can see here, everything was wired. It's a little bit hard to see because I just looked at the door. If you look at the housing, you can see we have the whole control A. Just check out the wires here. See, everything is wired properly based on what is in the schematics. Now, the interesting thing about this is if you return back here into the wire list, the wire list now has a wire length. So the interesting thing about having a wire length, this enables me to use a wire cutting machine. Now, if you look back here into our Rital and ePlan discovery, and you drill down in this here, and you drill to the manufacturing section here, you will see that we talk about this topic very strongly. It's actually the wire fabrication here. The wire fabrication, of course, Rital Perforex, to actually get this step done, we're already there, right? So I can show you the NC drilling templates. Here they are. And better than this, if you don't want to do the drilling, all you have to do here is just go send this email and this will put the project together and you will be able to send it to your retail rep. He can then forward this to the um, Perforex machine, to the mod center, and directly, like just in an instant, they can generate this uh, particular uh, Perforex drilling right out of this menu, out of this project. So you can run directly, or they will be able to run this right on that machine here. Um, it's most likely gonna be this one here, and it, they will pre-drill the holes. Now, for the step I'm actually really looking uh, for in two minutes is the wire fabrication. Before the wire fabrication, let's talk about the labeling of several different interfaces. And the one I really like is this one here. Why? Because I just click, actually click, click, two clicks, it's quite interesting, and we have the magic of these interfaces that will come to play, and it automatically transfers your project wires into the Clip Project Project Complete tool so that you can right away print the labels. You can see here all these labels have been printed. These are all the wire labels inside your panel. These are also all the cables inside your panel. And these are also all the devices inside your panel. So in a one single click, boom, generates this. This is what we're talking about here about the ePlan Electric P8 interfaces for labeling. Now, the one I'm really uh, looking for is this semi-automatic machine here. This semi-automatic machines, they will cut to length my wire and side by side, I buy this crimping machine here, the RC. I could crimp both ends of the machine. And remember, my label, my label is here, okay, with source and destination. So this combined together with the information you have here will allow you to basically print, cut, crimp the wires. And honestly, if you have a machine that can do this, so the machine that actually will pre-cut the wire to length and the machine that will help you crimp it, you will be finishing the wire within 45 seconds instead of probably two, two and a half, three minutes. Real time saver. It's, it's, it's a huge time saver, considering that when you go back here to your um, manufacturing time here at the very top when we look at this, this small portion of wiring and wire fabrication, so the landing and the wire fabrication, to these two together, they usually make up to 50% of your time. There's a huge, huge amount of time you can save by, of course, printing the labels, source target, and having the exact length. And how do we feed these machines? Directly off of this project here. If you go here to manufacturing, wire fabrication, Rital wire WT, here we go, and that's it. That's the only work you have to do to have the wires pre-printed. 
I hope this helped you a little bit further into this journey of understanding why when you start working with ePlan, well, it's the best way to an efficient engineering, but also an efficient manufacturing. Thank you. This was Roland from ePlan.